Hello everyone. We are back after one hour, after half an hour of coffee break. And now your simulator is also in front of you. Can you please now confirm me back, my virtual learner, that you are there with me? Can you please type online and confirm? Thank you very much, Calvin. Um, I can uh, see you. you are here. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Calvin, uh, we did not have the formal introduction with you. Can you let me know from where you are joining us? Just write the place from where you are, uh, you are at the moment. Okay, Nigeria. Thank you very much, Calvin. I hope you are enjoying this session. Thank you very much. It is interesting uh, because we have got our friends from Light here. Uh, I'm not sure if our, our WMU friends are there or not, but um, um, of course we have got the other people online and we have few in here in the room. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, press on. We were uh, there till uh, we have done the uh, heaters here. Um, uh, sorry, LD compressors. Now we are going to the heaters. The heater which you have seen earlier on uh, was this thing. And the heater works more or less on the same principle as the vaporizer, where the heaters are just heating uh, the liquid and, uh, and we are uh, increasing the temperature further to pass it to, to the boiler. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the, the difference between the heater and the vaporizer, we can see vaporizer is just turning the liquid into vapor state and the heater further enhance that vapor into onto our desired temperature. Mm -hmm. So that is what is happening here. So you can see uh, this line is coming <clears throat> to you from the LD compressor number two. This is a low duty compressor number one. Uh, this is from HD compressor number two and this is from there. If we do not want to use heater, we can pass the cool vapor directly towards the manifold either to take it to the tanks or to give a show. Mm -hmm. But if we are <clears throat> going to use it in our for some of our purposes, maybe we are warming up the tanks. We want to warm up the tanks from minus 161 degree temperature to uh, the uh, pos uh, positive temperature or bring the tanks to an ambient level. Then of course we will be use heating the gas from here and sending it to the tank. So there you go, uh, folks. This is the compressors pushing the gas here. Of course, this is a gas bypass line where we are controlling the temperature through this cool gas. And of course, the heated gas coming out of here. And uh, again, we can, you know, we have a choice that we can feed it back to compressor suction where we can uh, compress it and give it to shore hmm, or give it to the tanks or we have a choice that we can go from here to the boiler and of course uh, these are the lines from the vaporizers or vapor header joining uh, the vapor header so again here we will have got three alarms for the heaters also 
<clears throat> what are those three alarms? Is the loop oil gas discharge, mm, HD, high gas discharge, uh, temperature, of course, and high condensate level. What is condensate? Mm? Condensate is the liquid which condense in this area. If it condense here, it is going to fill this pot hmm? or this. So normally what we normally do is we time to time open this wall partially hmm? and we drain off the condensate or we uh, remove the condensate. Mind that if the condensate level is above certain thing, if you fill it, uh, when you will be running the exercise, you will be able to note that there is certain level of uh, liquid showing here. And once it will get full, uh, there is a system, it will give an alarm, high condensate level alarm, and if you do not drain that thing, that is going to stop the whole operation. So that is uh, the uh, the operations here on this uh, particular heaters. Right. Now <clears throat> we we will go uh, to the vaporizer themselves. Hmm? So that is our next destination. So now we are virtually going near the uh, vaporizer. So folks, here you can see there are two vaporizers. One, you can see, is a forcing vaporizer. Hmm? So, this is the liquid coming into uh, the, uh, the line. It is forced vaporized by the steam. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this outlet temperature is controlled. And I'll explain you in my presentation how this is controlled. And of course, uh, we will have the... Uh, vaporized liquid, oh sorry, vaporized gas going out from here. And where it goes, it technically come here. It come here, these are the uh, two lines, which again you you can see here in uh, in the, the vaporizer. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> this demister is getting the flow from the forcing vaporizer. So flow of gas from the vaporizer to the demisters, it is our choice now. These two lines you can see, one is going to LD compressor and from vaporizer to header. I'm going back again on that page so you can see that thing. So this is the line. From vapor header coming here, going to the system or from uh, vaporizer the forcing vaporizer coming, going into the same demister. So I, I hope you are understanding uh, this bit. Of course, when we will run this, uh, uh, the plant, we will be able to understand it more. Now, we have got uh, another, uh, again, let me explain you a bit further because uh, uh, there is one of our uh, uh, physical learners here who has missed few minutes. So I'm going back to him and explaining him. This is the high gas temperature alarm. Mm -hmm. If we have got the gas coming at a very high or discharging at very high temperature, we cannot discharge the gas at a very high temperature uh, because um, the compressor will trip. Mm -hmm. So these are these are low gas discharge temperature. If we are giving the gas very low temperature, then there is a chance that it may go on uh, compressor and freeze it here. Mm? So we want it to be on the right temperature. So we, uh, we will vaporize it, bring it to the right temperature and then feed it to the, um, the system. Mm? Now here we have got another system that we can get the liquid for example, we are berthing uh, on the port. We have got 
inert gas in our tank, but no vapor. So now we need to um, need vapor to gas up our tanks. But in order to gas up tank, the many ports, the shore are not able to give us uh, uh, the vapor on its own. So what they simply do, they will cool the lines and they say, okay, take the liquid from me and this liquid will come to us from the manifold line. I have explained you earlier that we will connect the manifold, we will take the liquid from here and of course we will send it to the line to the vaporizer. So there, folks, see this is the line to the vaporizer. Okay, so liquid has come from the manifold, come this way, we have taken it here, taken it to the uh, the line and feed it to the vaporizer. So now this line here is coming from the manifold. That is a cold liquid of minus 161 degree temperature. Hmm. So what you will have to do is to throw the liquid here hmm, and give the steam to this uh, vaporizer. And of course, can you see this is the steam inlet and that is the steam outlet. So the steam line is marked with ST1, ST002 and ST001 are the outlet and inlet of the, uh, the four sigma prism. So of course, whenever we start that, we need to switch on the steam. Then we manually open this valve and um, control the temperature, whatever temperature we want the vapor to go wherever we want it to go. So if it is too high, we will adjust it manually by reducing the steam or adjusting the steam. We can also adjust it by the flow of liquid. Once we have got the temperature settled uh, on manual, we will set up our temperature mm, and we will put it on automatic. Mm. Once it is on automatic, it will work automatically and keep on. Of course, at the moment we haven't set point, so we will have to set the point here. Whatever, for example, I want the temperature of my gas to be 0 degree centigrade or 1 degree plus or 10 degree minus. I will set my point here and then of course I will do it here. There are, because it is a vaporizer, there is a spray unit here. So at the moment it is on one times the spray nozzle size, but we have a choice that we can use the nozzles which are 1.5 the size of normal. Of course we will do it when we require it on a higher level output of um, uh, the vaporizer. So folks, uh, that is, these are two vaporizers which are uh, taking the liquid, uh, sorry, turning the liquid into the gas. At the moment, of course, you can see the pressure here is 734 kPa. Uh, it's just quite high at the moment. And that is because of the steam was opened here and there was no liquid given to it. Now, can you see the temperature here is rising and I have opened steam into the vaporizer. Of course, and after a while when it is going to get very high temperature, it is going to trip. Can you now see the pressure is also increasing? So I would rather close this valve and let the vaporizer settle in peace. Otherwise, in shortly we have got enough alarms here and there will be more alarms uh, <coughs> working here. Hmm? Now, folks, uh, you have learned about the vaporizer, the real operation we will do uh, later during the course. Uh, uh, and of course, I'll give you the, the presentation about all uh, how these units or how these things work during uh, the course. So now I will take you 
this was our uh, deck house or the machinery space on the deck. Now I will take you to the engine room. Hmm? You folks are very much familiar with the engine room, especially our audience here are very much uh, familiar with the uh, engine room. So hmm, can you tell me what is this? Uh, yes, it is an inert gas generator. In uh, in this one, of course, uh, normally we um, we do not use the flue gas of the main engines. We generate our own inert gas. Okay. Uh, nitrogen generator is separate. This is a nitrogen. Okay. So we uh, in of course nitrogen generation. We are using the reverse osmosis process to generate the nitrogen but here we are just running the nitrogen generator with low sulfur uh, diesel oil just to create clean gas we do not want sulfur in our uh, tank so that's why we use low sulfur fuels or <coughs> low sulfur diesel oil hmm? so we will what we will do here folks is uh, that we will um, uh, uh, run the uh, inert gas generator. Of course, I'm not uh, running it now at the moment because we'll run it during uh, certain exercises, which you will see here. And then we will uh, run, and of course, uh, when the students uh, will run it. So, technically, what we will have to do is we will have to open the supply of fuel or fuel pump, we'll have to supply of air into it so that it is burning with the right combination and we are getting the right amount of O2 level which normally we require about 2% or below the oxygen content but even below 5% anything is good enough for us. But here from here uh, of course we have a, a cooling water, salt water from system and cooling the scrubber, this is the scrubber tower. From the scrubber, the clean gas goes out, and of course, there is also a demister fitted into it. Once this is out from here, it will go to the dryers. Folks, these are unique dryers on the LNG carriers or LNG vessels, where you will we will normally have two set of batteries of silica gels. Uh, this is one set of battery and the other set of battery where which is filled with silica gel and what we can do is that we will pass the gas hmm, from here because of course uh, because it is uh, it has some amount of moisture in it so whatever the remaining moisture in it the silica gel or sometime they are loaded with active alumina that active alumina will absorb all the water from here and then that nearly uh, about 15 degree dew point or about less than 1% of uh, moisture this will go out. This if we are using this set for example then this set is going to be saturated the maximum time where we can use it is about uh, 8 hours depending on how much humidity we have in uh, in uh, the <coughs> ig we are getting um, so sometime we can even run it more but it is on average most of the cargo engineers stop this unit and start using this set of batteries and once they isolate it they start regenerating it. These units are kind of, um, some of them are automatic self-regenerating. Some the engineers will have to regenerate them. How they are gen regenerated is uh, very simply, we blow the dry air into it, which will take all the moisture from the active alumina or from the silica gel or other water absorbent material 
from there and it will give it back to the environment or um, uh, to outside normally this battery takes about 4 hours to regenerate mm. once it is regenerated mm, it is now on in a standby mode once as soon as this one gets saturated either it will automatically transfer or we will transfer as per the schedule so the gas which is coming out here has got less than 1% of um, uh, moisture in it, preferably the dew point of minus 40 degrees centigrade. Mm. And then of course, if the quality is not right, mm, we will vent it off because we can't send it back here. We will vent it off. But if, for example, if the moisture content is high, or the dew point hasn't reached, the desired dew point hasn't reached, we will vent it out and we keep generating and settling this thing. If once it is done, we can put it on uh, automatic mode or controlling mode uh, and you, this ventilation valve will close down automatically and it will go either to a hotel, a hold gas free line, which you have seen uh, the purple line, in fact, uh, I will show you again mm, uh, this particular line mm, and feed it into the tank. Mm. At the moment, you can see all the valves are open, so uh, it is feed it there. But of course, uh, we don't want to feed inert gas at the moment, so may we may be feeding uh, the fresh air. So we have control of feeding the the fresh air also is that we open this vent and leave this one closed and give the fresh air to the tank. This help us a lot uh, during the gas spraying operation. And of course now this line is going to the <coughs> liquid header of the, the cargo tanks. This is where you can see it is coming here and it is also going down to the uh, uh, hold the space, hold the space, uh, hold the space. Okay, so so folks, let's come back to the engine room. So this is one of the engineer's job here. What are the alarms here? Is the delivery pressure? For example, if delivery pressure falls below certain level, the plant will stop. Hmm. The plant will also stop if more if there is more than preset level of oxygen content. For example, I have set my level to two percent. If any the uh, inert gas content will go below above the two percent, then this valve automatically closes and this valve automatically opens and it keep on purging till the time we settle uh, the combustion uh, here in the the, uh, the boiler part of it or where we in this furnace part of it and once it is done then we, we are settled this lube uh, o2 content line light will disappear and uh, <coughs> and it will start working back again so for example we are scrubbing and we have got a low supply of water. Hmm? What will happen? Can you tell me? So when the temperature increases, yeah. the pressure will go or down. No, no, pressure will go up. Ah. So uh, it hmm. might go to high, high level. It may, oh. trip. it may trip. And the other thing, the supply temperature, if it is going out, hmm, then the more high temperature, the more vapor uh, holding capacity it might have. And we do not want to give the hot uh, inert gas to the tank. So we set it to a certain level. Uh, at the moment, we have set it to 22.5 degrees centigrade. So if that goes uh, more too much high, then of course uh, it will automatically trip. So here, we have got a low level alarm hmm? uh, and we have got high level alarm 
एंड देन वी हैव गॉट हाई हाई लेवल अलार्म तो ड्यू पॉइंट एट द मोमेंट द सिलिका जेल इज रिसेंटली बीन सॉरी एक्टिव एलोमिना हैज बीन रिसेंटली जनरेटेड रीजेनरेटेड एंड यू कैन सी एट द मोमेंट इनर्ट गैस इट इज गिविंग टू द टैंक इज माइनस डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड it is ideal hmm. we are always happy during our uh, gassing up process and uh, inertic process uh, even our minus uh, um, for minus 40 degree dew point temperature is good enough for us hmm. but if we want then uh, um, um, minus 51 is carrying below 1% of the humidity or moisture content and of course this o2 content is very high at the moment because it is obviously not and of course there is no delivery pressure so o2 content alarm we will also set on the preset level so if the o2 goes high this will close it will not supply to the tanks or to the liquid header it will automatically vent it off hmm. some of the systems nowadays have a recycling system but this particular unit does not so now after the inert gas plant in the engine room we will come to our other plant which is a nitrogen generator or n2 generator <clears throat> so <clears throat> that n2 generator is um, um uh, the o2 content at the moment Uh, how, how it is working is very simply it is just um, uh, taking the air from the top hmm? i will show you the nitrogen generator in my presentation very simple process uh, of reverse osmosis we put it on the standby we generate um, uh, uh, in fact let me start this uh, um, to you know um i'm putting the hydrogen generator on standby now it has gone on standby so let me open the valve you can see at the moment the tempera uh, temperature uh, dew point temperature is set up to minus 40 degree and o2 content at the moment here is 2% mm. um so i will acknowledge that alarm mm -hmm. so now i have already acknowledged that alarm and it has stopped flickering mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, folks uh, we are taking a break for 5 minutes i've got an alarm here mm -hmm. okay folks um, there was a disruption hmm, because of an unexpected alarm anyway let's uh, press on we have seen that we have acknowledged this alarm if there is more alarm on the page we can easily acknowledge them now at the moment can you see we have got um, the engine room alarms can you see this is a we are on the engine room page and can you see the light is flickering here hmm? so once this light is flickering here i can now i'm going to acknowledge those alarms hmm? i have acknowledged those alarms now will you be able to see 
then now the light is not flickering so if it is starts flickering it means there are there is a new alarm there the rest of the alarm i was aware of and i have acknowledged those alarms and we are doing our work so means I, the engineer is already aware of those alarms so um folks did you notice that when i have started the uh, the uh, i have opened the valve this valve was not opening and now i'm going to start my generator hmm? uh, once i start my nitrogen generator the reverse osmosis process will start and now you will be able to see the dew point temperature is changing now my ge nitrogen generator is started now i can partially open the valve to let it come to the buffer tank the by the pressure release valve which i have opened earlier now i am going to close that valve mm -hmm. and now all these <coughs> buffer tanks is now going to build the the uh, the pressure in it you will also notice that after a little while at the moment the o2 content is about 2% if i do not like it i can vent it off or if the amount is right then i will keep it flooding to the uh, uh, compressor seals or to my nitrogen bleed on the uh, deck manifold we will have to watch this dew point temperature this dew point temperature should never come in positive the ideal dew point temperature is minus 40 degree centigrade but for certain things we we can manage with minus 20 so but at minus 40 we have got about 1% of uh, 0.1% of moisture content in our uh, <coughs> uh, tanks so at the moment you may have noticed that our buffer tank pressure is not building because everything whatever was generated is going <coughs> to the tank these exercises when we have designed them we have put certain uh, points here for thinking of the people that why if this is thing is happening why it is happening why there is low pressure alarm why there is an high pressure alarm uh, <clears throat> so this is what now at the moment we have got uh, this buffer tank which i'll show you in my presentation where this is located on the deck so at the moment we are generating the ig we are generating the ig sorry nitrogen and that nitrogen is being collected in the buffer tank that buffer tank is connected to the annular spaces so if the annular space pressure goes below certain level this will automatically refill those uh, uh, annular spaces and uh, give it the required pressure hmm now we will come to our main area which is our engine room boilers hmm? the engine room boilers hmm? we have got two boilers number 1 boiler and number 2 boiler and you might see that both boilers are burning the vapor which we have generated on board you remember this valve this is the bog valve which is the boil off gas valve or it is a bulkhead valve anything which is coming on this side should be plus hmm? because the boilers don't like vapor coming to them and giving them thermal shock of minus 160 degree because you know the boilers are working on high temperatures so if we feed the gas to the boilers on <clears throat> on a very low temperature uh, gas going there they their clean may be destroyed 
So that is why this boil of gas valve automatically shut down if we do not have the right temperature here. So this is the monitoring point. At the moment, we do not have any pressure because we are not running compressors on uh, the deck or in our deck house. We have also not uh, haven't got um, uh, a very high turnaround here. Of course, we have kept the valve closed. So this will come here. Hmm? We will also have a nitrogen supply here. We will talk about this nitrogen supply later because it is a very complex thing which we are using uh, nitrogen for uh, for our uh, boilers and of course their uh, nitrogen on a gas tanker could also be used as the fire extinguishing medium. So there, these are just our two boilers. So folks, that is where we were in the engine room. Now let's go to the other part of the engine room. Okay, and that part of the engine room is a steam and lube oil uh, plant where we are. We we have two challenges, folks. There. Number one, the cold uh, liquid, which is cold gas, which is passing through our compressors, mm, that can destroy, that can literally freeze the lubricating oil. We do not want a frozen li uh, lubricant oil uh, going to our uh, compressors, which are running at thousands of RPM or hundreds of RPM. So otherwise it will just uh, destroy, heat up uh, the bearing and the bearing will be dead or uh, our compressor will be frozen or seized. So what we need to do is we need to uh, maintain the temperature of these things. So we have got a lube oil sump heater. So if we want to increase the temperature, we can use this one. Of course, we are using the pumps for the CETA and giving the lube oil to them. If the lube oil is too high uh, temperature, then of course we need to cool it down and for that we have a cooler here. So the message which I want to put across is that we need to maintain the temperature of the cooler or the sump heater. In addition to that, folks, uh, uh, we, if we are maintaining the right operative uh, temperature, now you may be asking uh, me that what is the right temperature? Different compressors, depending on their size, here you can see we have got low duty compressor, we have got heavy duty compressor, HD compressor, LD compressors. So the different designers may have a different parameters. That will be given in your operational manuals of these compressors. In my presentation, I will explain you certain bits uh, on it. So very simply, it is a system where you preset your temperature and you just uh, open the valve uh, and start the pump. Unless you have got a lubricating oil passing through the compressor, the compressor will never start. So one first thing, we need to have there is the uh, nitrogen going to our compressors, uh, so which is maintaining the nitrogen seal, uh, which is feeding the nitrogen to nitrogen seal, then unless and until this alarm is switched off, we cannot, we cannot, I repeat, we cannot uh, run this one. So in order to get this thing, we need to have an steam supply. So we will do it later when we will be operating these vaporizers and other things. And so here you can also see uh, the steam supply is on and steam is going to the um, to the um, uh, vaporizers. And of course uh, the uh, uh, the steam is also going to these um, some heaters. These wells are controllable valves where, for example, in this case, I am opening this valve to about 50%. So now you will see that this valve is open at 50% or 45% and it will maintain. 
So from manually controlling the supply of a steam, we control the temperature of this uh, here uh, of uh, the lube oil. And if we get too high temperature, compressors are going to trip, uh, and we will have to reset the vanes and start it again. Mm -hmm. Then we have got uh, uh, here the vaporizer uh, for LNG vaporizer, LD heaters, etc., which I have already talked to you in detail. Now let's come back to the cargo pump controls, which is one of the very important feature of uh, our working on board uh, uh, the, the vessel is that mm, <clears throat> the cargo pump controls, this, these are our cargo pumps. In tomorrow's lecture, morning lecture, I'm going to tell you uh, the parameters, operational parameters of cargo pumps. I will also show you the pumps itself, hmm, where you will be able to to see uh, how pumps are working, how they are lubricated, what are the constraints in them. So these cryogenic pumps are fitted inside the tank. Hmm. So let me take you to the cargo tank. Hmm. These are the pumps. These pumps are literally fitted inside it and hundreds of volts, wires or not wires, the cable which are carrying the electricity goes to these pumps and these pumps are run. These pumps, induction motors, create a very high temperature, especially at the starting torque. And they start uh, create such a high level of uh, temperature, sometimes they trip. This uh, is one of the biggest challenge of uh, the chief officers when they start the pumps. Uh, during our course, we will teach you how to start this pump uh, the best way. The problem with these cryogenic pumps that if you, they fail to start on first attempt, then you will have to wait for this certain period of time. Uh, mostly it is about 15 minutes. If we are not able to start it on the second attempt, then it is so hot that we will have to wait another half an hour or one hour, depending on your manufacturer of cryogenic pump. Um, it needs longer time. So that is one of the reasons where a lot of vessels were not able to start the pumps and discharge the cargoes in time. Hmm? Yeah, your question. So the, these pumps are started or they are high voltage? They are high voltage induction motor pumps. Tomorrow morning lecture, I'm going to explain you. In fact, I'm going to show you those pumps. Uh, you know how how they work. Um, uh, uh, the 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 important thing about these pumps is that very few people got inside pictures of it because these uh, they are manufactured by uh, different companies. And uh, the manufacturers are themselves doing the servicing of it. So it is not, the, uh, our engineers on board are normally not doing the servicing of it. They uh, fix one uh, pump, they take it ashore, or do the overhauling and fix it back. Um, on this particular ship, this is run by 440 volt, uh, not a star delta. There is no, the starting current of course is very high. When we'll do it, uh, you you will see it. And in, uh, in, uh, um, so these are folks are um, 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 pumps, and of course uh, you can see here we set the point here and then we start it. Uh, tomorrow, of course, um, uh, we will start the operations tomorrow or day after tomorrow. We will be able to give you the control, and you will be the one who will be experimenting or um, uh, running these things. Uh, sorry, virtual learners, you will only be able to observe this when our uh, physical learners here uh, are operating these pumps. So let's uh, move on, folks. This is our current uh, Every tank has got two main pumps. I repeat, two main pumps. 
in addition to that we have got a small pump can you see these are are a small pump we often refer them as the spray pumps what it is because they are low duty pumps and what they normally do is they generate uh, uh, the uh, they fill up the liquid and give it to the vaporizer for turning it into vapor for our uh, for use in uh, our boilers so they are very small capacity uh, <clears throat> pumps um, then what we have got here uh, is the, the main pumps main pump number 1 main pump number 2 main pump number 3 4 and 5 now every tank has got its two control panels for port cargo pump and starboard cargo pump at the moment what you are looking at is the number of one cargo tank what we can easily do is we can move on to number 2 panel and now what i will be able to see is the number two cargo pump here okay so uh, number two tank pumps so now every tank has got two pumps so i can go and control any one of them hmm? so um so folks uh, this is very uh, uh uh starting sequence we can define we will talk about it when we will talk about uh, the pumps operation uh, later during the course okay so this is what we have on the main uh, pump controls and again you can see here we have got low amperage alarm so whenever we have uh, we stop the pump the ampere goes down and we will have all those kind of alarms so now you can see because of this alarms we have got this light flickering hmm? so we can switch off uh, this light by just uh, we can stabilize this light by just acknowledging that all i know that every pump has got a low amperage alarm hmm? so here we are saying now i have nearly acknowledged all the alarms uh, now the moment i have acknowledged all the alarm did you notice that the cargo pumps control where my cursor is is now steady hmm? and it is not not flickering at all hmm? uh, so now if it starts flickering it will tell me that there is something wrong on this page hmm? so let's uh, move on further to our small pumps which is an spray control pumps hmm? so these spray control pumps is um, here we have got again exactly the same thing but the only difference here now the pumps are very small level and they are not uh, on a very high capacity and they are only one pump in each tank so if i am acknowledging their low amperage alarm i am able to you know uh, get this line steady now i can uh, um, even start it for because at the moment for example now i'll start this number 1 pump uh, i'll keep the wall closed because we can <coughs> start with it there is no liquid in it so it will automatically trip mm. so i will put it on manual mm. and once i've gone on manual mm. i can just press starts and of course this pump will run and trip so watch uh, the parameters there very carefully mm. so there we go folks did you see the slide has flickered it has gone on a very high amperage 
and the pump has stopped of course we are on a simulator so we haven't done much damage to the machinery but in real life we will never ever do that running the pump without any liquid hmm? so here we go folks now it has uh, ripped and um, we will uh, come back to this later when we will be doing operation now i will go to the ballast thing these things these tanks which you are viewing at the moment some of them are double bottom tanks some of them are the tanks in between the uh, the tanks so here are your wing tank and you see they are filled up to the level of 21.269 meters the the side tanks and these here are on a little lower level in fact so you can see these tanks are full this tank is partially filled so we can see the sounding here the one which are full we have got uh, the high level alarm so means we have crossed the high level alarm here we may have overflowed them and now because of this ballast condition we have got a draft of forward 9.46 and aft 8.83 meters this we are going to correct tomorrow after uh, yesterday you may remember that we have done the uh, ballast water management uh, presentation and technically will be um, we were supposed to do it today but we were delayed and now we are going to do it peacefully tomorrow uh, the ballast operations uh, <coughs> and uh, you will be able to see if it is running okay and then tomorrow morning you will bring the ship to even keel on one of the exercises mm. so here we have got what we have got with the same uh, we have got in a small pump which we call water spray pump and that is just simply throwing your water uh, also using it as an inductor uh, and to induct the stuff all these lines are feeding the water to the system we have got a low suction free chest and the higher suction you may be fully aware of it hmm? and we have got an higher overboard valve we have an after peak tank here we also have a fore peak tank here hmm? and we have a forward tank here hmm? these tanks are it's a kind of coffer dam in between uh, and of course this is our collision bulkhead mm -hmm. so the in between the collision bulkhead we have got this thing so now we uh, tomorrow we'll of course starting the pumps so technically we have got three pumps mm -hmm. which we can use in you can see there is a ring main system here so we can use this line and go through it and feed this line or vice versa we can utilize we can simultaneously load uh, and discharge from one side or another or the other line so for example if i'm discharging this tank this tank from this line i can load from this line this tank and this tank Hmm? or the other tanks whichever we are looking for so but normally we never do simultaneous loading and discharging but we, in certain cases where we are doing ballast management or the ballast exchange as per the d2 process then we will use uh, this method hmm? so folks uh, now we will come to um our last page of course uh, uh, i forgot to tell you that the line from this pump is also going to inert gas generator so technically we are we can start this pump 
and feed uh, the water to our inert uh, gas uh, generator. So here we have got the inert gas generator. So this is the water line which is coming from the inert gas generator. Sorry, in a, from the salt water ballast pump. Hmm? Uh, sir, yeah. no, in, in, uh, this, uh, we only have this or we have a separate scrubber <coughs> pump also? No, no. The, this is scrubber. I will show you in the picture tomorrow. This is not a huge scrub. This is a reasonably small size custom made IG generator. That IG generator does not require a, like a huge oil tanker like you know I know your background is oil so you may have seen the huge <coughs> scrubbers there. Yeah, so we are not talking about those huge scrubbers. Mm. This is relatively small scrubber where uh, as compared to the one which we have got uh, there. So let's uh, <coughs> press on with this thing and uh, of course um, uh, here we are um, uh, going uh, to the ballast system as, uh, again this is the overboard valve if you want to discharge the ballast overboard uh, to see yeah, and of course in the new ships in between there is an uh, ballast water uh, system where we can you know kill the germs or kill uh, the invasive species. Then we move on to our last uh, section for today which is the ancillary tanks. Mm -hmm. These are folks tanks in your engine room. Don't worry about this void space. This is uh, the part of engine room where some of the machineries are there. But now you can see different tanks here. They have got numbers. So for example, number seven is a heavy fuel oil settling tank. Number two is starboard. Mm -hmm. Number 21 and a small tank here. Number uh, 21 is basically the clean drain tank. Mm -hmm. and so on so for a, there are so many different tanks for example 27 which is a different color so a green color which is a cooling water tank so why we are doing showing you this because you will also be working on an stability program so technically these tanks are filled to a certain level and you can see them here on this lodication lodicator plan uh, the software is launching this clean tank is in the engine room they are all tanks in the engine room so that is not so folks here we are this is our um, uh, um, tank system uh, the lodication system or the uh, lodicator software where we have got for example we have got the fresh water tanks these are all the track leak tanks deep fuel oil tank uh, overflow tank wing tanks to port wing tanks to starboard and how much they are filled you know at the moment most of them are empty and we will be able to see what is uh, how much the fuel oil capacity the weight etc etc how much is uh, our light ship and we will able to see the graphical presentation of our status of um, our stability we will do this uh, towards the end of the course uh, the stability stuff so at the moment we are focusing on the the cargo operations so folks uh, I'm coming to the end of my uh, operational lecture on the spherical uh, type ship. So if you have any questions, I am open to that, those questions. We have gone through 19 different control panels uh, since uh, the morning and uh, you have experienced 
lot of uh, different things over the day if you have got any questions i am open to your questions uh my virtual learners you can type your questions yes uh, uh i have certain questions so uh, i will take a leave from my virtual learners now and i will answer the question and the queries of my physical learner in uh, the simulation room so the virtual learners we will see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, that will be a continuous session on simulator presentation simulators and uh, presentation i hope you have enjoyed the day's uh, lecture sorry for some technical glitches in the beginning of uh, the day but now everything is in control and we are giving you the best learning experience we possible thank you very much folks we call it a day Thank you very much uh Scott Lights folks. Thank you very much Calvin. I hope our WMU guys are also there. Thank you very much WMU guys if you are there. Thank you bye.